Hey guys, it's Clary Berry, and this is going to be the second half of the Jefferson Bible. Parables of the Lost Sheep and the Prodigal Son. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for, him, for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth, eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after it? that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety-nine and nine, ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle, sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, A certain man had, had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me a portion, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided them unto his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would have faint, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his eldest son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. And he said, to, and he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years I do serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gave me, gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was, was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and that is all I have. And all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. The parable of the unjust steward. <clears throat> and he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest no longer be, be, mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said with himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. 
Then he said to another, how much, how much owest thou? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, take thy bill and write four score. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than children, than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends as the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is the least faithful also in much, and he that is unjust is in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches, and if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will come to hold the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard these things, and they derided him, and said unto him, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Parable of Lazarus. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, who was laid at the gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man died also and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham far off, and Lazarus, Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee thereafter, father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Precepts will to be always ready. Then he said unto the disciples, It is impossible that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a milestone were hanged around his neck and he cast into the sea than should offend one of these little ones. Take heed of yourselves. If thy brother trespasses against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespasses against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee and say, Repent, thou shalt forgive him. T -rep -t repent, thou shalt forgive him. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And he and will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith may I may sup, thy, and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he think that servant, because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants, and we have done that which was our duty to do. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. And as it was in the days of Noah, shall it be also in the days of Son of Man. They did drink, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came 
and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from the heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his staff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, this one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Parable of the widow and the judge, the Pharisee and the publican. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? And he spake this parable unto certain trusted, which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up in the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as the other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing far off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered a certain village, and, in, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. And the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that which that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and for the and said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement to put her away? He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man so be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. 
For there are some eunuchs which were born, so born from their mother's womb, there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuch for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Then they were brought unto him little children, that he shall put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto them, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, he saith unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt not, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said, saith unto him, all these things I have kept from my youth. What? What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. Thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I say again to you, and I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is possible, but with God, excuse me, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Parable of the laborers in the vineyard. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day he set them into the vineyard and he went out and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them go, go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right i will give you and they went their way again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise and about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the idle all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man has hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, whatsoever is right that ye shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came and when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. When they had received it, they murmured against the good men of the house, saying, These that, excuse me, these last which wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden of the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst thou not agree with me for a penny? Take that, take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto his last, even I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine I evil because I am good? So the last shall be first. And the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. Zacchaeus in the parable of talents. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among publicans, and he was rich. He sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was of little stature. He ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when, he saw, when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. 
And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. And he said, Therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive himself a king and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gave five pounds. And he said likewise unto him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man, and thou, hast, and thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou did, didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servants. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I was laid not down, that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they say unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies which would not want that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And when they drew nigh upon Jerusalem and where and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught to you, ye shall say, Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. As the disciples went, and the disciples went, and Jesus did, and did as Jesus commanded them. And he brought the ass and the colt and put them on their clothes, put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And when he has, was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? The Pharisees therefore said unto, among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, who was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come, that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bring forth. But if it die, it bring forth much fruit. And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany, and he lodged there. The traders cast out from the temple. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, and they came to Jerusalem. And Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, It is not written, My house shall be called 
Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves? And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out in he went out of the city. Parable of the two sons. And they came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, there came to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I can do these things. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him, The first, Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Parable of the vineyard and husbandmen. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And the seasons he sent to the husbandmen a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant and at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled and again he sent another and him they killed and many others beating him and killing some have having yet therefore one son his well beloved he sent him him also last unto them saying they will reverence my son but those husbandmen said among themselves this is the heir come let us kill him and in the inheritance shall be ours and they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard what shall therefore the lord of the vineyard do he will come and destroy the husbandmen and will give the vineyard unto others and when the chief priest and the pharisees heard this his parables they perceived that he spake of them but when they sought to lay hands on them, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Parable of the king and the wedding. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding that they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready, but come unto, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and, took, and the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and tell, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So the servants went out into the highways, and gathered all as many as they found, both good and bad, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw that there, he saw there were a man which had not on a wedding garment and he saith unto them friend how how earnest thou in hither not having a wedding garment and he was speechless then the king said to his servants bind him hand and foot and take away take him away and cast him into the outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen tribute marriage resurrection then went the pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, the teachest, and teachest the ways of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt me? Why tempt ye me ye hypocrites show me the tribute money and they brought and they brought unto him a penny and he saith unto them whose is this image and superscription they say unto him caesar's 
Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled, and left him, and went their way. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, <clears throat> saying, Master, Moses, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed with if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife deceased and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And the last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitudes heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them, them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered them, answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang, on, hang all the law and the prophets. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, and with all the soul and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Precepts, pride, hypocrisy, swearing. Then Jesus spoke. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. For they bind heavy burdens, and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers but all the their works they do for to be seen of men they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at the feast and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted but woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for ye neither go in yourselves neither suffer them that are entering to go in woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye devour widows houses and for a pretense make long prayer therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, when he and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold, and Whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. 
Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift? Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that sweareth by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at the gnat, and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto wilt witted sepulch. I can't remember how to say that word sepulchres which indeed appear beautiful on the outside but are within but are within full of dead dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sep sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our father, we would have not been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measures of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how ye how can ye escape the damnation of hell? The widow's might, and Jesus sat over the sat over against the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there he came to a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more hath cast more in than all which have cast into the treasury, for all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Jerusalem and the day of judgment. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus say unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is in the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto him that are with child, unto them that with that with that are with child and to them that give suck in those days but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter neither on the sabbath day for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor now nor ever shall be now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves Ye know that summer is nigh, so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. But the day and the hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, 